In this topic, we want to learn about cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency. Now, cumulative as a word, um, you might have heard of cumulus clouds, clouds that are gathered, right? So cumulus means to add, right, or gather. So we're going to, um, for cumulative frequency, it's when you add up the frequencies up until the current class, or bin or group, right? Because class is the same thing as bin or group. And cumulative relative frequency, also known as cumulative percent, is when you add up the relative frequencies or the percents. And these ideas are important for the concept of percentile, which we'll t discuss in section 3.4. All right, so let's learn how to do this. So. We have this, currently it's a frequency distribution because we have the frequencies right here. So let me make a note of that. So number of, number remember, is frequency. So this is the frequency right here. These are the classes right here, right? So frequency and classes. Now, we already learned how to find relative frequency, and we're going to do it again. The relative frequency is how frequent this group is in relation to the whole. So the first thing we have to do is find the whole, right? Find what all those add up to. So I'm going to go grab decimals. I'm going to get rid of this from a previous video, and I add these values up. So 5 plus 8, and so on and we get a total of 165. All right, so that's our total down here. So I'm just going to put a little note down here. The sum was 165. Okay, so now the relative frequency will be the numbers in the frequency divided by the total. So we'll take 5 and we'll divide it by 165. And then 8 divided by 165 and so on. But I'm going to do three decimal places because that's the most common way to write these anyway. So let me grab decimos. Make that go away. All right, so we want 5 divided by 165. Then we want 8 divided by 165. 16 divided by 165 and so on. All right, so let me write those ones down. So it's 0 0.030. 0 0.048, 0, okay, this one here would round, so we want to go 0 0.96, but the next number is a 9, so that would become 0 0.97 on that one, and then 0 0.152, because this is a 5, so go one five one, except the five on the fourth decimal place will round up that third decimal place to a two. And then I'll just keep going. 32 divided by 165, and then 45, whoop, sorry about that, 45 divided by 165, and 34 divided by 165. All right, so that gives us all our values. So 0 0.194, 0 0.273, 0.206. And again, we're rounding here. So that 3, the 272 becomes 273. The 1939, the 39 becomes, the 9 makes the 3 turn into a 4. All right, and then I just write all of those values in to my table. Lovely, lovely. No problems. All right, so now let's think about what this is saying. Cumulative means to add frequencies. So we're going to add the frequencies. All right, well, the first frequency um, is 5. So this means add frequencies. I'm going to write it right above. Add frequencies. So the first one is 5. I'll just put it right here, 5. The next one, 5 plus 8. I'm adding the frequencies. These are the frequencies and I'm adding them. 5 plus 8 makes 13. Now I add 5 plus 8 plus 16. Or if you like, we already know 5 and 8 makes 13. 13 plus 16, right? Because it's 13 to get to this bit and then add 16 more makes 29. Now I want to take 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 25. In other words, 29 plus 25. Okay, well that's 54. 
now I want to take 54 and add 32 because 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 50, excuse me, 16 plus 25 is 54. These first four numbers make 54. And then I want to add on that 32 there. So that makes 86. Now I know 5, 8, 16, 25, 32, all of those numbers make 86. Then I would want to add on a 45. So 45 plus that is 131. And then by the end, all the numbers should add up to the same total that I already found, which was 165. And there we go. We added the frequencies. Now if you wanted to, I mean, let me go back to Desmos. You don't have to do it in your head. I mean, I'm just doing it in my head for fun. But you could sit there and add them up. So we know 5 is the first one. 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 plus 16. 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 25, Oops, except if you have to type it correctly, 5 plus 8, oh, and I don't know what I'm doing. I can just add. I can copy and paste these. So let me copy, paste, and then add on 32. Then I can copy, paste, and add on 45. And of course, I don't really have to copy, paste. I can just add on the next number and see what it would be. Right? So there you have it. So Desmos, of course, can make this all a lot easier. You don't have to add in your head. Okay, so now over here, the last row, excuse me, the last column, we want to have cumulative relative frequencies. This is a very important one because this one gives the percentiles. So we're going to add the relative frequencies. That's an L, <laughs> sorry, it was a cursive L there. So we're going to add the relative frequencies. I'm sorry, my dog is going crazy behind me. Hopefully it isn't too distracting for you. So this is important because this gives the percentiles that we're going to need later on for another section. So that's why this is a big deal, the cumulative relative frequencies. Okay, now there's really two ways you can do this. So I know that the first one, I'm adding relative frequencies. So I can do this with the decimals fine, right? I know the first one's 0 0.030. I know that it's 5 divided by 165. No problems. What you can do, what it's, it's honestly a little bit easier to do, is to just take the cumulative frequencies and divide those. Because what's happened over here is we rounded. If you remember, there were several in these that we rounded to three decimal places, and we had to round up and so on. If we stick with the cumulative frequencies, then we know we're going to have the right decimals. So this is 29 over 165. This one, next one will be 54 over 165, 86 over 165, and 131 over 165. And I know the last one is 165 divided by 165, which is 1. Okay, so now it should be similar to what these two numbers would be added up. So I'm betting it's around 0 0.078. But let's see. So if I take 13 and I divide it by, here, get rid of all these. <laughs> all right, so 13 divided by 165, 0.07. Ah, look, it would be 0 0.079. There's a little bit more rounding in here. That's okay, right? So 0 0.07. Seven, nine, which we wouldn't have necessarily known just looking at those two. If we did these two, we would get 0 0.078. And me personally, I would accept either of those answers because one of them is by adding the decimals and one of them is by using the cumulative frequency. Technically, the cumulative frequency way, though, is a little bit more accurate. And now you're seeing why, right? So I'll take 0 0.078, I would personally. But again, I try to encourage my students to just use the fraction method. It, it'll be more accurate. All right, so let's go. 29 divided by 165. So let me grab these. 29 divided by 165. And then it was 54 divided by 165, 86 divided by 165, and 131 divided by 165. Okay, so we get 0.176 for the next one and then 0.327. So 176.327, and then the 86 is 0 0.521, and then 131 is 0 0.794. 
And there we have it. Those values are all found. And again, if you use the adding decimals way, they will be a tiny bit different. So for example, I can tell this one would have been 0.175, right? So if you add these three numbers, you get 0.175. But if you take 29 and divide by 165, you get 0.176. It's fine. Um, most professors will be understanding of that. There's a little bit of rounding error going on there. No big deal. All right, now, what percentage of students scored below 79.9% on the final exam? Okay, well, 79.9 is right here. So the percentage of people that are below that would be all, well, the number of people below that would be all of these people, right? From five all the way down to 32. So we can just add them up, right? And then make it a decimal and then make a percent but we already have it. We know what all these people add up to. They add up to 86. And we know what percentage that is because it's right here. So how many people would be would be 86? The percentage of people, which was what was being asked for, would actually be 52.1%. In looking at this problem, I realized I want to add some more questions to it for your own benefit because I tend to ask questions like this on exams. <laughs> so I'll take a big table like this and I'll ask a bunch of questions. Okay, so let's look at some of them. So we already answered what percentage of students scored 79.9 .9 or below. That was 52.1%. Okay, so if you want to see it in the, in the table, I'll actually star it. It's this one. That's where that number is coming from. Now, how many students scored below 50? Interesting. Okay, so 50 is right here, but I wanted the students that scored below 50, which would be these two right here. Which I, I could add them up, but I already did. It's right here. So 13. 13 students scored below 50, because once they hit 50, they're in the next boat. So 13. How many students scored between 40 and 69.9? Okay, well, how many would be a whole number question. How many is our frequencies for the record, <laughs> right? So when you're looking at how many questions, those are frequency questions. I'll actually highlight that. This one and this one, those will be frequencies. How many is frequency? Percentage will be relative frequencies, right? So this will be a relative frequency. Might be a cumulative relative frequency, but it, d it just depends on the question, right? But that's what these will be. So these will be frequencies, either regular or cumulative, right? So regular or cumulative frequency. This will be regular frequency, relative frequency, or cumulative frequency, depending on how you choose to to do it. Same thing with this one, this one up here. That's a relative frequency because it's a percentage or cumulative frequency that you would use to figure that out. Okay, so the students that scored between 40 and 69.9, so I'm going to look at the frequencies here. 40 is right here, so between 40 and 69.9 is this group, this group, and this group. So I want to add 8 and 16 and 25. So those three. So that's 24 plus 25, so that's 49. And again, you could, you know, check that with Desmos if you want to. If you want to write a note to yourself, it's 8 plus 16 plus 25. That's where I got that from. This one was 5 plus 8. Right? That's where that came from, if you want to see the work. <laughs> All right, now what percentage of students scored higher, or 70 or higher? I think we've actually already done this question um, in a different way. So 70 or higher is all of these students. So if you want a percent, you add the relative frequency. So I could add these three up right here, because that would be this group, this group, and this group. So if I add 0.194 plus 0.273 plus 0.206, I'll get this answer. All right, so let me grab 
decimos because I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I just made this question up. So, But I am going to add it to the notes for future semesters. So if you're watching this in a later semester, you'll see it. 0 0.194 plus 0 0.273 plus 0 0.206, and I get 0 0.673. And there we have it. And it's very important when you, again, when you see these problems to break them down. How many would be frequencies? Percentage will be relative frequencies or cumulative. Oh, I wrote that wrong. Cumulative relative frequency. Sorry, everybody. That's a cumulative relative frequency. Mm, I'll just have to erase it. Sorry. I did that wrong. Frequencies and cumulative frequencies are how many? What percentage is either relative frequency or cumulative relative frequency? Because you have to add the decimals to get the percentage. 